Good day, Junior Tickies. I'm Mrs. Brimacombe. We are going to look at Chapter 11, Activity 2. Indicate whether the following statements are true or false. It is compulsory for all business to register for VAT if their turnover is less than 1 million. That is false. If your turnover is less than 1 million, you can volunteer to register. VAT is levied at 14%. False, the VAT percentage is 15%. All VAT returns must be done by monthly. That is true. It is every second month. The invoice-based is the preferred method of VAT collections. That is true. Fruit and vegetables are regarded as VAT-exempted items. That is false. It is zero-rated items. Question 2.2. Complete the sentence on the following statements. That collected by a business when goods are sold is referred to that output. That paid by a business when goods are purchased is referred to as that input. So these are just theory questions. Make sure that you study your theory. Question 2.3. The information presented appears in the books of Mickey's general dealers for the VAT period ended 28 February 2022. The business uses a markup of 60% on cost. So when you start this now, make sure that you look through all the questions and see what is expected of you. Make sure that you go through the information. Take note that they provided you with the subsidiary journals and there's question marks, which means that we need to solve that. If you have a look at additional transactions, these transactions still need to be recorded. They did not provide you with the general journal. It doesn't mean if the general journal is excluded and there's additional transactions that should appear in the general journal that we're just going to leave it out when we're posting to the VAT output, VAT input, and the VAT control account. Question 2.3.1 says now, refer to information A to C. Do the relevant calculations in the subsidiary journals of Mickey's general de dealers and post to the VAT input, output, and VAT control accounts in the general ledger? So the first part of this question is to first complete the question marks, which means all these blank spaces. We're going to start with the cash receipts journal. The business uses a markup of 60% on cost. 7% discount was allowed for early settlement of accounts. Sundry accounts consist out of bad debts recovered. So just some basics before we start solving this. Please remember that from the cash receipts journal, bank will always be debited and the rest is credited, except for cost of sales and discount allowed. Cost of sales and discount allowed is an expense to the business. It is in fact a non-cash item. It doesn't form part of your bank. Another important point to remember, your bank will include the VAT amount. So that is VAT inclusive. Everything else, your sales, must consist out of excluding VAT. Cost of sales is always calculated on the selling price, excluding VAT. Debtors, when we receive money from debtors, it will include the VAT amount. It means that my discount allowed will also include the VAT. So these are just very important pointers to remember. The same as with the bad debts recovered. When we recover bad debts, those debtors whose accounts was written off as bad debts, they will pay us the full outstanding amount, which will include the VAT. So starting with sales, to solve sales, we can take the VAT output amount times 100 divided by 15. That will equal the selling price excluding VAT. 
Once we've got the selling price excluding VAT, we can calculate the cost of sales by using the markup percentage. So we have to say times 100 divided by 160. That equals my cost of sales. Once we've calculated the cost of sales, we've got the sales, we can look at bank. To solve bank, remember that bank is including the VAT amount. So we can take the 41,250, which is my VAT output, and we say times 115 divided by 15. But now we need to add the sundry accounts, which consists out of the bad debts recovered and the receipts from debtors. That will equal the total bank. To solve the discount allowed, if the total receipts from debtors is 7% and we've got, sorry, if the total discount is 7% and the receipts from debtors is given to us, that equals 93% of the amount that we've received. This means that we can calculate the discount by taking the receipts times 7, because I want to calculate the 7, divided by the 93. And that equals the discount allowed. Cash payment journal. From the CPJ, it means that bank is always going to be credited. The rest is debited, except for discount received. Discount received is regarded as an income. We paid less because we settled our account early. Bank will include the VAT amount. If we look at trading stock and consumable stores, that will be excluding VAT. The payment to our suppliers will be including VAT. If we look at sundry accounts, they said to us, Sundry account includes drawings of 26,000 and vehicles 180,000. Now you need to remember that cash payment journal means money taken from the business. Now, if we've got drawings, it means that the owner has taken cash from the business. But that means that there's no VAT involved. But if we look at vehicles, if we purchase a vehicle, then we've got that involved. The second bullet, receive 2,185 discount for early settlement to our suppliers. The total amount owed to the suppliers was 89,585. So first we can solve the payment. To solve the payment, we're going to take the total debt which we owe our supplier minus the discount that equals the payment to our suppliers. If we look at the VAT input amount, to calculate VAT input, take bank minus payment to our suppliers, the 87,400, minus the 26,000. The 26,000 was the cash drawings by the owner. This is why we need to subtract that. So to find out now the VAT input amount, just take 277,380 times 15 divided by 115. And that equals my VAT input. To find trading stock, we can take the bank total minus, minus VAT input minus consumable stores, minus the repayments to our suppliers, minus sundry accounts. So we need to exclude the discount received. And that equals the trading stock amount, 54,000. Petty cash journal. From the petty cash, petty cash is always credited. The rest is debited. If you look at wages, no VAT is paid on wages. We cannot claim that on wages. So wages must be excluded. The petty cash will reflect the amount including that. Trading stock 
sundry expenses will reflect the amount excluding VAT. So to find out the VAT input amount, we can take 760 for trading stock plus sundry expenses 480 and then we say times 15 divided by 100. Once we've got my VAT input, we can calculate the petty cash amount. I've got different options. I can take the VAT input amount, which we've just calculated, times 115 divided by 15. And that plus 1,500 equals the total petty cash amount. Or you could have taken VAT input plus trading stock plus sundry expenses plus the wages. It will give you exactly the same answer. Looking now at our next journal, the debtors journal, they provided you with that output, 34,500. The business uses a markup of 60% on cost. If you look at the debtors journal, my total credit sales will be the selling price, the sales amount, excluding that plus the VAT output amount. If we look at sales, this will reflect what is the sales excluding VAT. So to find out sales, we are going to take VAT output and we're going to say times 100 divided by 15. That equals 250,000. Remember, the total amount that the data owes us will be the selling price, the sales excluding VAT, plus the VAT amount equals the sales amount including VAT. To find out the cost of sales, we are going to take the selling price, the sales figure, and we're going to say times 100 divided by 160. That equals my cost of sales. Cost of sales is always calculated on the selling price excluding that. In my debtors allowance journal, everything is blank, so we need to solve it by looking at the additional information. They said the total returns including that was 31,740. So yet they provided us with the total amount. No allowances were given during the month, which means that everything was returned, all the stock was returned. This means to solve the debtor's allowances, we're going to take the amount including that and we're going to say times 100 divided by 115. That equals the total debtor's allowances excluding that. To find out the VAT output, we can take the amount including that times 15 divided by 115. That equals 4,140. You could have also taken the amount including that minus the amount excluding that. That equals the VAT output. To find out the cost of sales, take the debtor's allowance, which is excluding that, times 100 divided by 160 to get the cost of sales 17,250. Creditors journal means credit purchases. From the creditors journal, creditors control is always going to be credited and the rest is debited. Creditors control will include the VAT amount, trading stock, consumables, stationery, and then we need to look at sundry accounts, but that will exclude the VAT amount. Sundry accounts consist out of two computers purchased at 6,200 each. So to find out my VAT input, we can simply take the creditors control amount, which is including VAT, times 15, because we want to calculate the VAT input, divided by 115. That equals my VAT input. Or you could have taken Trading stock plus consumables plus stationery plus your sundry accounts and then say times 15 divided by 100. From the creditors allowance journal, 
Credit discontrol is always going to be debited and the rest is credited. Again, credit discontrol will be the amount including VAT. Trading stock, excluding VAT. Consumable stores, excluding VAT. There were no stationary, no sundry accounts. To find out my VAT input, take the credit discontrol amount times 15 divided by 115. Once we've calculated the VAT input, we can calculate consumable stores. To calculate consumable stores, take credit as control minus VAT input minus trading stock. That equals 1,200, which is your consumables. Alternatively, you could have taken the credit as control total times 100 divided by 115 and then we subtract the trading stock and we will get exactly the same amount. The second part of this question is to post to your VAT output and to your VAT input as well as the VAT control account. So to, for us to find out do we owe SARS or the SARS owes us. If we start with the opening balances, VAT output, output is a liability which means that the balance will appear on the credit side. Posting from the cash receipts journal, it means that we owe SARS 41,250. From the cash receipts journal, my details is bank. Please remember now the discount. Discount was allowed to our customers. This is including VAT. So to find the VAT amount, because we now need to make an adjustment to our VAT. Because we are collecting less money, less money is owed to SARS. This means VAT output will be debited with discount allowed and the VAT amount 1050. Do not forget about the discount. We do absolutely nothing with the payment from our debtors. Bank would be debited, receipts, debtors control is credited. But once discount is given to our customers, then we need to adjust the VAT output because less money is collected. Next, we've got the bad debts recovered. When we decided to write off debt as bad debts, it means my VAT output would be debited. But now once we've collected that money, we owe that money to SARS again. This is why we need to find out the total debt collected, which includes the VAT, was 26,910. The VAT amount is 15 divided by 115. That must now be paid to SARS. This is why that output will be credited and my details will be bad debts recovered from the general journal 3510. From the debtors journal, that output means that money is owed to SARS, so that output will be credited with 34,500. From the debtors allowance journal, it means returns by customers, we owe less money to SARS. Therefore, that output is debited from the debtor's allowance journal. Then we've got additional transactions. The account of the debtor, Harry Blue, was written off 897, including VAT. To find out the VAT amount, we have to take 897 times 15 divided by 115. Bad debts means that that output will be debited. There's a reduction or in your VAT amount payable to SARS. Mickey returned stationary, which he took home. The VAT amount was 48. So when the trading, sorry, when the stationary was taken for personal use, it means that output would have been credited. That money is owed to SARS. We cannot claim that on items which we're not going to sell or 
which is not going to be used in the business. So we took the stationery for personal use, therefore that output was credited. But now that stationery was returned. This means that output now needs to be debited and my details, drawings, general journal. Once we've posted everything to the VAT output account, we can now balance the account, take the credit side minus the debit side, and that will appear in your VAT control account on the credit side. That input is regarded as an asset, so the balance brought down will always appear on the debit side. From the cash payment journal, it means that that input is debited and my details is going to be bank. So we need to post 36,180 on the debit side of the VAT input account. Please remember, discount was received. We paid less for early settlement of our account to our suppliers. That discount received includes the VAT amount. To find out the VAT amount, we have to take the total discount received, including VAT, times 15 divided by 115. That input will be credited and my details is discount received from the general journal. Because we paid less on the items that we've purchased, it means that less can be claimed from SARS. From the Petty Cash Journal, it means that that input will be debited and my details is Petty Cash. Creditors Journal, it means that we purchase on credit. That input will always be debited, 23160 from the creditors allowance journal, it means returns to our suppliers. That means that we need to make an adjustment with that input. That input will be credited with 2760. Now the additional transactions, there's one more to post. The business was charged 650 VAT on a tax invoice for trading stock purchase. This means that VAT input is involved. The correct amount should have been 360, correct the error. So if we look at what is happening here, we've purchased on credit and we said that we had to pay 650 VAT. But in fact, it should have been 360. So we've overstated the amount by 270. By overstating the amount means that we now need to adjust that input. On the credit side, we're going to have 217. Once we've taken all the transactions to the VAT input account, we can balance the account by adding the debit side minus everything on the credit side. The balancing figure must be taken to the VAT control account. We now apply the double entry principle for every credit, there's a debit. Once we've taken VAT output and VAT input to the VAT control account, we can now calculate do we owe SARS or the SARS owes us. If we add the credit side, it can, we can see that it's more than the debit side. It means that we have the balance carried down, balance brought down on the credit side. This means that we owe SARS 29,294. Question 2.3.2, you need to complete the accounting equation by looking at the additional transactions. So we've already done the calculations. We're just going to now show how does this influence the accounting equation. The first additional transaction, the account of the data Harry Blue was written off 897, including that. So when we do the accounting equation, we are going to show what is it excluding that it means that bad debt is debited and debtor's control is credited. To find the amount excluding that, we need to say times 100 divided by 115. 
That means asset minus 780, owner's equity minus 780. But now we're not done. We still need to show that amount, which means that account debit, that output, account credit, debtors control, and the VAT amount was 117. So assets minus 117, because debtors control is an asset, liabilities minus 117, VAT output is a liability, and we owe SARS less 117. Transaction number two, Mickey returned the stationery which he took home. The VAT amount was 48. So forget about the VAT amount now. Just show what do we do when the owner decides to bring something back to the business which he's taken for own use. So now he's taken stationery. This means that stationery will now be debited and drawings will be credited. Now, they provided you with the VAT amount 48. To find out what is the amount excluding VAT, we have to say times 100 divided by 15. That means owner's equity plus minus 320. Stationery is an expense which will have an effect on the owner's equity. Drawings is regarded as owner's equity. With the VAT, we now need to debit VAT output and credit drawings. This means that owner's equity will be plus 48 and liabilities minus 48. The business was charged 650 VAT on a tax invoice for trading stock purchase. The correct amount should be 360, correct the error. So we've said that creditors control, we need to debit with 270 and that input is credited with 217. This means that your assets will be minus 270, liabilities minus 270. The last question. The internal auditor, through a random check, discovered that the owner, Mickey, does not pay the full amount due to SARS on due date. On inquiry, Mickey stated that he's experiencing a cash flow problem and does not have the money to pay all of it to SARS. What advice would you offer Mickey concerning this practice? Well, this, you need to remember, the business is an agent of SARS. That is collected on behalf of SARS. That money which you collect doesn't actually belong to you. That money is owed to SARS. So when you submit your VAT returns, you cannot say, Oh, but I don't have money, so I can't pay this month. So that money does not belong to the business. It should not be viewed as cash reserves for the business. It's unethical business practice. SARS obliga obligations must be kept separate and dealt with immediately. You could incur penalties if discovered by SARS audit. Thank you very much. Next, we're going to look at activity three. I want to leave you with this quote. Your attitude determines your directions. Have a wonderful day.